Here comes Facebook. How y'all doing? Prophet David Taylor here with your weekly live prophetic word. Um, <clears throat> I'm just blown away by the things that God has been doing, but God has truly been doing stuff that only God can do. And when the Lord begins to minister to you or lift you or call you or begin to operate in your life on a level that only he can operate on, <clears throat> it literally leaves you speechless. Because when the Lord is moving in the way that only he can move, then I, there, there are many times there are not even human words to describe. And so anyway, that, that's just kind of a preface to the prophetic word I have for you this week because it's just... It's next level stuff. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay? So, let's say a word of prayer and dive right in. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Thanking you, O God. Thanking you for your mighty Holy Spirit that indwells us. Thanking you, Father, that we can call you Daddy in the name of Jesus. Thanking you, Jesus, for your undying love and your mercy and your grace, Lord, because words would fail us to describe your goodness. So I surrender myself to you, O oh God. I just ask you to use me, speak through me. Uh, fill me with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Fill my tongue, my mind, my heart, my hand gestures, my lips, everything, O oh God. Use me <clears throat> and speak through me, O oh God, that you might be glorified in all things and that the body of Christ might receive the word that you have for us this day, O oh God, and that unbelievers would see this and see you in us and be challenged to turn from their own way and to believe on the true and the living God. So have your way that you might get the glory in all things because this is about you and not about us. And I just thank you. I'm grateful to be a part of your kingdom and your program. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. <clears throat> Remember my tagline? What's my tagline? God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to his servants, the prophets. Okay. Um, there are some people right now that this is, uh, we're turning towards the last uh, 11 days of October. There are some people right now that are in the will of God, that are doing what the Lord wanted, because we listened to them all summer. And when the Lord showed up with the new thing in September, then we were ready. Some people are still out of the will of God. Some people don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay. And they might live a whole nother year and go through a whole nother go round and still may not end up in the will of God next year, the perfect will of God. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about next level stuff, okay? Because everything with God, if you didn't know, everything with God, uh, Revelation is progressive. Everything is on levels. And when God lifts you to a certain level, uh, no matter what you do on that level, if you master everything that the Lord has for you on that level, there's always another level. God can always call you higher, no matter where you are in Christ right now. There's always another level. Now, when you come on with this video, please like and share, because as I say all the time, when God releases a prophetic word, it needs to go around the world. Everyone needs to see it because they're going to get blessed by it. They're going to be encouraged by it. They're going to be challenged by it. And it has answers for so many people. That's the power of the prophetic word. <clears throat> so no matter what level you are right now in Christ... Okay, there's another level, there's a higher level, there's a next level. Okay, and you will also discover as you walk through Christ that you're going to have to let go of your ideas. Part of learning how to let Jesus be not just your Savior, but also your Lord, is to let go of your ideas. Not just to take your hand off the wheel, but to let go of what you think it can be or what you think it should look like and take the limits off of God. OK, stop trying to bring God down to a human level and think that God can't do any more than you can do or God couldn't possibly do any more than what you could think of. Because neither one of those things is true, but God has to lift you from level to level in your faith and in your walk with him to walk on those different levels. Very important that you understand that. OK, so with all that in mind and having said all that, we're going to read. I'm going to read uh, the verse, and then I'm going to go back and read the verses around it. <clears throat> Our foundational scripture for today, <clears throat> excuse me, is John, the book of John, the gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, in the New Testament, fourth book of the New Testament, uh, the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12, okay? 
And it says, I'll start with the King James Bible. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. <clears throat> Let's look at the New American Standard. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Berean Literal Bible. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one believing in me, the works that I do, also he will do. And he will do greater than these, <clears throat> because I am going to the Father. <clears throat> That's John 14, 12. Now I want to read the context around that. So I'm going to read John 14, 5 through 14. Thomas said to him, and Thomas was one of his 12. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or, else, uh, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Wow. Okay, there's a lot there to unpack, but there's some stuff I want to focus on. Because <clears throat> you hear me say it all the time, if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. I want to focus on what the Holy Ghost wants us to see. And the Lord says, very truly, I tell, I tell you, whoever believes in me, stop. So the first thing that we understand is to get to this level of God that we're talking about today, you got to believe in Jesus. How do you believe in Jesus? You believe in Jesus by having a steady diet of the Word of God. This is where I think people get confused, okay? Just like you wouldn't eat one sandwich and then not eat again for a week and not expect to have problems in your body, you know you can't just eat a sandwich on Sunday and then not eat again till next Sunday. You're going to have problems in your body, in your physical self, and you get that. Well, I stopped by to tell you that your inner man, your spirit, the breath of life inside you, that part of you, that part of you feeds off of the word of God and the filling of the Holy Spirit. You can't do that just once a week and expect to grow in Christ. Just like if you're a baby and your parents only fed you once a week, you'd soon be dead. If you survived, you'd be malnourished and sickly and underdeveloped. I stop by to tell you, a lot of people have that same problem with their spirit, with their inner man, because they don't understand why. Because you have to have a steady diet of the Word of God. So when the Lord said, whoever believes in me, if there's something in the scripture that Jesus does or says that you don't quite believe, it's because you haven't heard it preached to you yet enough. Because you haven't heard the Word. Okay? You haven't heard the Word. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. OK, so if you don't have faith in a certain area, it doesn't mean that the Bible isn't true. It means that your faith is at a very small level in that area. That's where people get confused. They don't understand that the scripture says that according to your faith, so it is unto you. What you wish the Bible said is according to God's power, so it is unto you. But if that were the case, every Christian would have full victory all the time. Because God has all power. That can't be the problem, God's power. The problem is always the same. What do you believe? Where is your level of faith? Okay? So the Lord says, whoever believes in me, remember I told you, 
We believe on him once for all time to accept him as Savior. That's ABC. Admit you're a sinner. Believe he's the Son of God. Died on the cross. Raised on the third day. Confess that with your mouth. ABC. That's how you become saved. But to grow in Christ and to become what God wants you to be, you have to HBO. You have to hear, believe, and obey. Okay, well, I stopped by to tell you that HBO is a process that you have to repeat every day for the rest of your life. That's how you build up your faith, is that you have a steady diet of the Word of God. And as you have a steady diet of the Word, your faith goes from level to level and glory to glory. That also means that the converse is true, that if you are not regularly feeding on the Word, you're going to stagnate. And if you stagnate, then you're not going to have the faith muscles, the faith strength, the faith development to do what you're trying to do in the spirit. That's where people get confused. That happened to Jesus' own disciples. Some people brought uh, someone to him that was demon possessed. And they wanted the disciples to cast them out. And they couldn't cast them out. I'm talking about Peter, James, and John. The folks that walked the closest with Jesus couldn't cast them demons out. Then they brought them to the Lord, and the Lord cast them out. And they said, why couldn't we cast them out? What did the Lord say? The Lord said, well, my power was kind of on the fritz that day, so I know there's a little short circuit. That ain't what he said. He said, because of your unbelief. Because you are not developed enough yet in your faith to have the level of faith it took to cast that demon out. That's why they couldn't do it. That lesson is so important. I don't understand why people don't teach any more on that. Because it's not according to God's power, so it is unto you. It's according to your faith, so it is unto you. And so the Lord says here, whoever believes in me. <clears throat> that's why you have to keep listening to the word of God. You have to keep listening to the word of God. And you have to find some new people to listen to. Now, as you come on, please like and share. Please like and share this video on as many platforms as you can. Because when God releases a prophetic word, and it's a powerful word today, it needs to go around the world because it's going to bless and deliver a lot of people. Okay? And so when the Lord said, whoever believes in me, you have to continually, continually ingest the word of God. Continually get filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's how your faith goes to different levels. You understand? So if you are only in the word once a week, that's why your faith, that's why you're struggling in your faith. That's why your faith is so small. That's why there are things you're trying to accomplish in the spirit that you can't accomplish because you haven't been feeding your faith and your inner man, the breath of life is emaciated. Okay? So whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Stop. Now, <laughs> the Lord just told you that if we believe in him, we can do the stuff he did. Now, I'm working on a teaching. I don't have it all ready yet, but I'm working on a teaching called uh, The Stuff He Did Because He Was Jesus and The Stuff He Did Because He Was an Anointed Man because people confuse the two, okay? People deeply confuse the two. There is some stuff that Jesus Christ did because he was Jesus, the Son of God. For example, being born of a virgin mother. For example, uh, having no sin in his blood and therefore no sin in his life. For example, taking the weight of the world in terms of all the sin into his own body. He did that stuff because he was Jesus. Couldn't nobody do that but the Lord. But walking on water, turning water into wine, casting out demons, opening the eyes of the blind, uh, healing the mentally ill, raising the dead. He did all that because he was an anointed man. We could do that too. Okay? We can do it too. The saints can do it too. The Lord was not the first prophet to do miracles with water. Moses did miracles with water. The parting of the Red Sea, the river turning into blood. Okay? Elisha, when he got Elijah's mantle, smote the water. In the water, he said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? Hit the water, and the water parted. Okay? Moses got water to come out of the rock. So the Lord was not the first prophet to do miracles with water. The Lord was not the first prophet to do miracles with food, okay? Moses asked God, and God brought quail to feed a nation, and God made manna fall from heaven. And both Elijah and Elisha fed a lot of people on a little. And Elijah told the widow that uh, her oil was going to multiply to pay her debts, okay? 
So the Lord was not the first or the only prophet to do miracles with food. See, so there's some stuff he did just because he was Jesus. And then there's some stuff he did because he was an anointed man. And that's the stuff he's talking about, the works he's been doing. We can do that stuff too, okay? You can't take the sins of the world into your body and pay for them. You can't do that. You don't get to choose your parents. You can't do that. You can't live a life without sin with no sin in your blood. You can't do that, okay? That's the stuff, some of the stuff he did because he was Jesus. But opening the eyes of blind people, unstopping deaf ears, loosing tongues of the mute, okay? Uh, helping lame people walk, pulling people out of wheelchairs, uh, telling women that have been declared infertile that they can have babies, uh, breaking mental illness, breaking the power of cancer off of people, and actually raising people from the dead. We can do that. We can do that. Okay, Prophet Taylor, if you say something like that, <laughs> then have you done something like that? And the answer to that question is yes. Okay? When I was 24 or 25, I had angina. And for those of you that don't know what angina is, it's a condition where your blood vessels in your heart can just suddenly close and suddenly constrict and give you a heart attack and you just drop dead. I'm 24, 25 years old, went to the doctor, he said I had angina. So I was not nearly at the level of faith I am now, and I just lost my mind. So I went and ran into a friend of mine's house who was a prophet. And I said, oh, oh, Lord, I think I'm going to die. I think I'm going to die. He said, David, why do you think I'm going to die? He said, because the doctor told me <clears throat> I had angina, and my blood vessels could close up on any time. And, and, I, and I just went on and on and on. <clears throat> then this man that was a prophet prayed for me. The Holy Ghost fell. And the power of God fell on him, and he said, the power of God is upon me to heal you. And he laid his hands on me and said I was healed. And I didn't feel anything. So I left his house, and I went on my way to the pharmacy to get the medication that the doctor had prescribed me. And I heard the Lord say, you don't need to get that medicine. I said, what did you say? And the Lord said, I said, you don't need to get that medicine. I said, then what should I do? And he said, just believe. So I said, I believed, and then I felt the power of God shoot out my heart and shoot through my circulatory system and open it back up, and I never did go get that medicine. That's when I was 24, 25 years old, which was a long time ago, and I'm still here. One. Two, my son had asthma when he was born, and we used to have to give him breathalyzer treatments when he was just a baby, when he was just a baby in the, the crib in the little baby carriage thing, we used to have to give him breathalyzer treatments to open up his lungs because he had asthma. And he had asthma as he grew. And then one day when he was a teenager, I had grown enough in my faith. I got tired of dealing with all that. And I laid my hands on him and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke this asthma. And I command this asthma to leave you. And by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. And my son got healed of asthma that same day. And hasn't used the inhaler since then. That's a long time ago. That was, oh Lord, that may, maybe that's decades ago. Okay? Two, three, I'm a fire survivor. Okay? Oh, uh, what is this, 2019? Around 2007, 2008, I was in a house fire. And uh, long story short, the neighbors, I was in an apartment building, the neighbors had fallen asleep with a cigarette and lit the couch on fire. <clears throat> end up lighting the building on fire. We didn't even know what was happening. Me and my son were right across the hall. My son knocked on the door and ran out. I didn't even know what he said. I opened my room door and there was flames all around me, 13 feet high, all around me. And then in the front door, there was an explosion in the front door. Okay, roof was caving in. I mean, everything around me was on fire. I, I couldn't believe it. And then I said, I can't go out this way. This can't be it. So you know what I did? I put my head in my forearm like that and ran out the front door. And both me and my son got out without a scratch in a building that was on fire for hours. Not even any smoke inhalation problems. We smell like smoke, but we didn't have no breathing problems. You can't tell me that's not a miracle. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is what I'm trying to tell you. So when I'm up here, remember I tell you, I'm never talking about something that I haven't lived or done myself. So when I'm sitting up here telling you that God can do physical miracles, 
God does stuff like he did in the Bible, because when they threw Shadmach, Meshach, and Abednego in, in the fiery flame, and the Lord got in the midst of the fire with them, and then men didn't burn up, I'm a fire survivor, me and my son. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's how I know this stuff is real. I'm not just sitting up here running my mouth. So when the Lord says that we can walk in the same, see, the stuff that you read in the Bible is still true now because God doesn't change. So what's the problem? The problem is always the same. We have to believe it because it only manifests according to our faith. That means on a scale of one to 10, if you have a faith level two, you will only see God move in your life on a level two. That's where people get confused. It's not according to his power. If it was according to his power, all Christians would be walking in the fullness. It's according to your faith. And somebody that's on a faith level four, God will begin to manifest in their life on a faith level four. Do you understand? So when the Lord says that whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, you have to believe it. You have to believe that God through you and let me say right here that it's not you doing the work. That's where a whole lot of people get hung up. It's the spirit of God in you, but you have to surrender and let the spirit of God have his way. He's the one that supplies the power. You don't have to supply the power. You believe it. If the Lord is opening blinded eyes, we can too. If the Lord is unstopping deaf ears, we can too. If the Lord is pulling people out, remember Peter and John pulled a man up at the beautiful gate that had been lame and crippled in his feet. And the Bible says that his, his uh, ankle bones and his feet received strength. And that man got up. Remember that the Lord healed someone that had been uh, lame for 38 years. That man was laying by that pool for however many years, but he was lame for 38. That's almost 40 years. That's almost four decades of being lame. And the Lord healed that man and he got up. He said, take up your bed and walk. If Jesus did stuff like that, we can do it too. The problem is always the same. You don't hear people preaching it. You have to hear it so you can believe it, so you can build up your faith because you can walk in it too. Open and blinded eyes, unstopping deaf ears, loosing mute tongues, uh, mental disease, all kinds of cancers, okay? Uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, infertility, because there's times in the Bible where women thought they couldn't have babies, and the Lord came along and blessed them with a fertility blessing, and they ended up having a child. Sometimes women had children in very advanced ages, because God is a God of fertility, but those women had to believe it. The woman with the issue of blood, remember, she got her healing because she grabbed the Lord from behind and pulled the virtue out of her. Remember, Jesus wasn't even facing her. She got that healing because she believed it, and the Bible says... In the scripture, it says, she says, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. But when you look at the verb tense in the Greek, she actually said that over and over and over again. If I can but touch, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. She said that over and over and over again to build up her faith. And when she reached out and touched Jesus, she touched him with the hand of faith. That's why the virtue came out of him. Because remember, the Lord wasn't even looking at her when she did that. Okay. If Jesus did stuff like that, we can do it too. But somebody's got to preach it. Somebody's got to preach it so you can hear it, so you can start to believe it. Because it is not by your power. God is not asking you to do that. God is asking you to surrender to him so that his Holy Spirit that lives inside you, if you're a Christian, can do that. Because the Lord said, if we believe in him, we'll do the works I have been doing. On to the next. And they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Stop. <laughs> now, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't know how much greater you get than raising the dead. Bringing dead people back to life. The Lord did that at least twice in the scripture. I'm sure he did it more because there's a verse in John where John says, we couldn't write down all the stuff that Jesus did. There wouldn't be enough books in the world to contain all the stuff the Lord did. So what we have is a selection <laughs> of things that the Lord did. So the Lord actually did more than is recorded in the scripture. But in the scripture, we see him raising the dead at least twice. He raised uh, that girl from her funeral procession, Talitha Kumi, damsel, I say to thee, arise. And he raised Lazarus, and Lazarus had been dead four days. Okay? So I don't know how you get much greater than that, but I looked up that word greater, and that word greater coming out of the Greek uh, it means large, but it also means wide in the widest sense. So if we read it, 
uh, truly, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I'm doing. He will do even wider things, larger things than these, because I'm going to the Father. Jesus only ministered on earth publicly for like three years. But if we live past the age of 33, then we have many more years, larger things, wider things, okay, things like that. Because I don't know how, you know, maybe the Lord meant greater in uh, quantity, because I don't know how you get much better in quality than bringing somebody back from the dead. But opening blinded eyes. See, the anointing can be so strong in your place of worship until people can walk in the sanctuary and get healed. The anointing of healing can be so strong that bones start snapping into place, that people get up out of wheelchairs. Um, I don't remember this lady, but I saw her testimony. She either got a disease or got hit by a car. I don't know. And she was in a wheelchair for a while, and the doctor told her she'd never walk again. She said, I don't believe it. And she kept speaking her faith, speaking her faith. And one day, the camera showed her pushing herself up out that wheelchair. And now she's up walking around fine. She's a music minister. Her name escapes me. But the point I'm trying to make is that stuff still happens now, okay? But somebody's got to preach it so we can hear it, so we can believe it, so we can start to walk in it too. And I, I'm hearing in the spirit some people saying, but Lord, I'm not worthy. I stopped by to tell you, that's what the blood of Jesus is for. We are not worthy in and of ourselves. We ain't going to never be worthy in and of ourselves. We're worthy because we're in him. He, we're covered by his blood and we're covered by his righteousness and God takes Jesus' righteousness and applies it to our account and treats us just as if we'd never sinned. So we are worthy in him. That's why we use his name. It's his righteousness, his blood, his worthiness that is applied to my account and I get the benefit of it. That's why the name of the song isn't Mediocre Grace. That's why the name of the song is Amazing Grace. Because that's amazing. You see that? So for those of you listening to me right now who are saying, Lord, I'm not worthy, you are worthy in him. But Lord, I'm not clean. That's what the blood of Jesus is for. If we can, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus will wash you clean. Okay? So I'm trying to help you get past your objections to help you understand that we're supposed to be walking in the same kinds of works that Jesus walked in right now because God didn't change, the Bible didn't change, the Holy Ghost didn't change, okay? The only thing that changed is a lot of people just don't preach it and teach it. And it's amazing how strongly people believe in evangelism. That's always amazed me. It's amazed me how strongly people believe in missionary work. It's amazed me how strong people believe in forgiveness. And then when it comes to healing and miracles, they say, if it's God's will. <coughs> That's always amazed me. It amazes me now. That means you haven't heard enough sermons to build up your faith to help you understand that health and healing is a part of the package that Jesus died to give you. Health and healing is just as much yours in Christ as forgiveness of sin is. The miracle power of God, the very power of God, the spirit of God that released his power to make the world. He's the same Holy Ghost that moved on the face of the deep during creation week. That's the same Holy Ghost that lives inside of us. And he wants to move through your life so that the power of God can be made manifest. And it needs to happen in your life first. That's why I told you my testimony. I've been healed of angina. My son got healed of asthma. And we both survived a house fire where the fire was raging while we were asleep. We were asleep and the fire was raging. And I don't have a scratch on me. <laughs> this one, no smoke inhalation. This is what I'm trying to tell you. That's why you can't talk me out of it because I've already been through the fire literally. So that's what I mean when I say it's time. God is calling believers to do what the scripture says, to walk in the works that Jesus walked in. Miracles with water, miracles with food, uh, raising dead people, breaking mental illness, breaking down the curse of cancer. Anybody that's lame in the feet or the ankles, anybody that, get, that can't walk, uh, uh, anything like that, opening blinded eyes and stopping deaf ears. Jesus did all that. We can do it too. Not by our own power, not by our own strength, but by the power of the Spirit of God.
that dwells in us. Now, I'm going to say this last thing, then I'll be done. You have to learn how to stir up and charge your spirit and let the Holy Ghost take over. And this is a technique I learned from Prophetess Sophia Ruffin. Okay, remember I posted that video last week? She talked about speaking in tongues is what activates the power on that level. That's the truth. As you begin to speak in tongues, as you begin to pray in tongues, as you begin to sing in tongues, you have to spend time developing your prayer language. And as that happens, the Spirit of God will begin to bubble up on the inside of you and the Holy Ghost will take over. And the Spirit of God will get, begin to pray through you because the Spirit of God knows what to say to the Father and the Son better than you ever will. And the Spirit of God will begin to manifest His boldness and His power in you. And you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's the Holy Ghost and not you. So to activate this anointing, you need to speak and pray in tongues more than you're doing now. You need to speak in tongues, you need to pray in tongues, and you need to spend time in your private time with God working on tongues, working on your prayer language, working on your private time with God, your prayer language, and as you begin to pray and speak in tongues, and as you begin to spend time in tongues, you will feel the Spirit of God rise on the inside of you and take your prayers and take your everything to a whole new different level to the point where it's Him praying through you, okay? I've tried it, and it happened same day. That's how you activate this level. And if you don't do it that way, you're not going to be able to walk in this level because you can't get into this level of walking in miracles through natural means. This is not natural. This is not flesh. This is not human effort. This is the way the Spirit of God moved through the Lord when he walked the earth as a man. The Lord is calling us to surrender to the Holy Spirit so he can move through us in the same way. Nothing about that is natural. Everything about that is supernatural. So that's why you have to access this dimension, this level, through the Spirit. And that's going to come through speaking and praying in tongues. I've already implemented it in my life and saw instant results, and you will too. Okay? All right, that's prophetic word for today. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. Now, when you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues on the broadcast, I'm asking the Holy Ghost, is there any demons I need to cast out? Is there any physical healing that needs to be released? Are there any financial words and any other prophetic words he wants me to release? That's what I'm doing when you see me do that, okay? So if you've got any prayer requests, put them on the screen, uh, and I'm going to begin to pray in tongues. Okay, the only thing that healing Ryan. If you're, okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak healing to Erica's body right now, oh God, because by your stripes she is healed, Lord. So from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, you have already paid for whatever's trying to afflict her. So I speak health and healing and 100% wholeness. If it's a fever, whatever's going on, let it break right now. And from this very moment and this very hour, she will feel better. And the power of God will manifest and she'll know she's been delivered. I rebuke any sickness, any brokenness, oh God. And we ask for mercy for, for any place they may, may have missed it, oh God. And pull them in the perfect will of God. And let the power of God manifest right now in her body, oh God. So they will know and see that you are a healer right now, oh God. And that they may give a testimony that they turned around because they believed in your miracle healing power. We thank you for it. We believe you for it. We decree it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the true and the living God. Amen. Amen, amen. God bless you, Ryan. Thank you for putting that up there. Okay, when I was praying in the Spirit, the Holy Ghost said to me, what came to me was, the word, the word, the word. So remember I told you when God repeats something like that, he's trying to call your attention to it. What that means is that the way we get in this, we got to stay in the word. Same thing I said at the beginning, beginning of the hour. That it's the word of God that's going to feed your inner man to get your faith to where it needs to be. So a whole lot of people are strong on emotions and a whole lot of people are strong on theatrics and a whole lot of people are strong on a whole bunch of stuff. God bless you, Ryan. But they're not strong in the word. And it's the word, the word, the word. Okay. Um, uh, bologna sandwiches, pizza, uh, salads, 
uh, uh, sweet honey iced tea. That's what feeds your body. Water, apples, grapes, peanuts. That's what feeds your body. Do you see how you understand that? You see how you understand how to feed this? Okay. And what's wrong with that? We have to feed this or we're going to die. Well, you have to feed. You got to feed that too. So the Holy Ghost is saying the word, the word, the word. So we need to be sure that we are ingesting a regular diet of the word of God so that that inner man can be fed so we can begin to walk in this level. And if you want to know the scriptures about what I said about praying in tongues, that would be 1 Corinthians 14. Okay? 1 Corinthians 14 has everything you need to begin to develop your faith in this area. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. That's 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 3. So read that whole chapter, but that's where you start in the Word to activate this level. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 3. That's where you start. That's the kind of Word you have to start ingesting to begin to activate and move on this level. All right? All right. Well, amen and God bless you. Uh, thanks to those of you that watched me live. God bless you to those of you that also watched the replay. Please remember to like and share this video. So I'm here every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for the live prophetic word. And then I come on the second Thursday, second Thursday of every month with a series I call No More Genies, where we get rid of our genie concept of God and we study what the word actually says. Um, I actually... I uh, have released two new books for the holiday season, and they're entitled My Alphabet is Christmas. I know they're backwards in the screen. <laughs> there's one is secular, much more traditional, and there's one that's Christian. This one has scriptures in it uh, concerning the birth of Jesus. Okay, so these are actually available now. The ebook is on Amazon for pre-order, but also you can uh, order the print books right now. Okay. And I think I'm going to be talking about that. Uh, they mentioned it uh, in church this morning. I think I'm actually going to be talking about it uh, next week uh, to explain a little bit more what's going on there. All right? So thank you so much. Thank you for all your support. God bless you. And remember, it's time to get in the word, the word, the word, and start speaking in tongues and praying on that deeper level until you feel the Holy Ghost take over to start to catapult us into this miracle level, this healing level where we, we can begin to let the Holy Spirit do the same kinds of things through us that he did through Christ. All right? Amen, amen. God bless. And I will see you next time.